This thriving beaver wetland was created upon a tiny quiet stream in just a matter of months and is doing incredible things for not only the local wildlife but the people who live here too. We're in Devon, the beaver capital of England, where they've been coming back now for over 15 years. But we're going to be looking at one very special location along the Budley Brook, which has been completely transformed by a family of beavers. In the summer, I first came here to meet Ed, a local wildlife ranger who shared exactly what he and the beavers have been getting up to, and I've since decided to come back in the winter, as it's always easier to see the full extent of the beavers' work. This story is just so awesome, as it's a perfect example of how we can successfully live alongside beavers, of how they can bring a little bit of chaos to rejuvenate a tired and regimented landscape. So flowing behind me over here, this is the Budley Brook, and it's a pretty good example of most rivers and little streams in the UK because they're singular, they're narrow, and they're aligned by agricultural land. And it's not much, but it is aligned by some vegetation, some sort of low-lying stuff. But back here throughout the wetland, there are some larger trees too. This kind of habitat is exactly where we want to see beavers back in our landscapes. And it's exactly where they can have the biggest and fastest impacts. I'm actually sitting on one of their dams. They built a series of dams along here. There's a really long one going all the way along there. And what this is doing, is it is holding back a lot of water. So let's just rewind it back a minute and talk about why beavers even bother building dams. Well, I don't know if you've ever seen a beaver move on land, but it's not nearly as graceful as they can move through the water. Beavers feel like they're safest when they're in the water because, you know, they evolved with predators like wolves and bears. They use it as a place to not only access food, but also retreat and raise their young. So how do beavers build their dams? Well, beavers are actually incredibly resourceful. I've actually seen the beginning of a beaver dam. And what they do is they pile up stones, big rocks sometimes, to form the foundation. I would actually love to see a beaver carrying a stone into place. I think that would be hilarious. Um, but then what they do is they then pile on all kinds of different shapes and sizes of sticks, grasses, and mud. Beavers have got incredibly sharp claws. They can dig, they can move and pack in mud, and they've also got self-sharpening teeth. They've effectively got a little chisel in their mouth, which can get through all kinds of different wood. They can fell entire trees over the course of a single night. And it even looks like they've tried their hand at a bit of brickwork here. But the really important thing to remember is unlike human dams, beaver dams, they allow the water to pass through. Can you hear this? Water percolates and it trickles through dams at a much slower rate. And this has a lot of benefits to people, as you'll find out in a minute. The other interesting thing which I've just noted about this beaver dam is that they actually filter the water. So if you look up at the top of the dam here, all of this is where all the sediment builds up, all of the mud, all of the sill, all of that gets trapped up at the top of the dam. Then what passes through is cleaner water and you get this much sort of like more sort of gravelly and sandier uh, soil. So for ecology and nature, beavers just bring a little bit of chaos because if you look around the landscape, this is why I think we need to get beavers back in our agricultural lands on those little streams. It's because if you look around, it's all just regimented, it's orderly. What beavers do is they bring some chaos back to it in the best way possible. Things like creating these different structures where, you know, you have these trees which just couldn't cope with all the water and they've died. Some of them have fallen over, some of them have snapped, some of them are still standing. It just creates a, a more dynamic habitat. The complexity of the ecological interactions which take place in and around beaver wetlands is nothing short of mind-boggling. It's a 200 part video series in itself. So I'll put it this way. I can't think of a single creature which wouldn't benefit from beavers in the landscape. Can you? So this particular beaver wetland isn't just helping nature, it's helping the people of the nearby village East Budley. The brook flows right through it and before beavers showed up it would regularly flood during heavy rain. But thanks to the beaver wetlands retaining and allowing that water to move more slowly through the landscape, they're saving people's homes from being destroyed and hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of damage. But today, many parts of the UK are experiencing severe flooding. This is in part due to the success we found in draining and continuing to drain our land of water. It's due to the way that we've straightened our rivers to speed up the flow of that water. But it's also due to the fact that we've eradicated the beaver. If beavers can stop flooding here, 
where else could they do it? So in the beavers damming the brook here and creating these wetlands, this has meant that the local farmer has lost some fields. What does the farmer think of it? He's fine. He's, but I, I tell you what we need to give credit to him. Um, he's a tenant, so this is all Clinton land, but he's a tenant. And they have lost land here. They also, this used to be their cattle crossing that they used to be able to drive through. And for a amount of time, they weren't able to do that. So when they were moving cattle from that field to this side, they had to run them around the road, which took about 40 minutes. Mm. So that was a, like in a proper loss for them. Um, the Wildlife Trust actually put in a new crossing for them under during the trial because there was funding for that. But the tenant has been actually great and he's been more interested just to see um, see what the beavers do. And yeah. if he's lost a corner of that field, well, you know. Well, they've gained a drinking spot, they've right? Gained, they've gained, exactly. <laughs> um, and they seem to love it. And interestingly, beavers can be a real asset to farmers. So over the past few years, we've had some incredible droughts. We've had some record temperatures. There was some drone imagery shot here and it showed that this whole beaver wetland stayed green. It stayed wet while the rest of the landscape around it was dried out to a crisp. This area stayed wet. So what's been crucial to the success of beavers returning here and you know what will be required if beavers are to return widespread across Britain is how we manage them and their impacts. So Ed, the local wildlife ranger here, he's responsible for doing just that you know he keeps the farmers happy he keeps the local residents happy and he and he does this in a number of ways we've had a property that's opposite the yard there by the gate um, in the early days there was a really big dam there and we we all loved it because it was like a new wetland it brought water up to the road level which was not clever but also it meant that their um, outflow of their septic tank was no longer working um, so an elderly lady living in there suddenly her sewage is coming back up through the toilet mm. as a real issue that you need to be able to not wait till tomorrow to go and do to right. take that dam out. So that you know, I think we've got what we what what we what we need as a country. As in, beavers are should be quick and easy to be managed. There isn't that much red tape as long as you know what you're doing. You're doing it for the right reasons, you know. And all of this really excites me a lot because this is a new opportunity. Over the next decade, over the next, or well, even right now, we we're going to need more people coming in, working with beavers, understanding them, so that we can bring them back to Britain in just the best way possible. And for anyone that thinks that having beavers or rewilding any parts of our landscape is gonna mean that we can't produce food, well, sure, if you're doing it on a really large scale, I can see why there would be some issues there. But if you're just allowing little patches like that throughout the landscape, this is, this is what's key about this kind of rewilding, is that we're being sympathetic to the landscape as a whole. If you can allow beavers to do something like that, the positives of that, the, the benefits which that brings outweighs any negatives which come of it. If you've enjoyed this video, then please subscribe for more like it. And if you want to get more from and support Leave Curious, become a member on Patreon. This is linked on the screen now. If you want to keep watching, check out the video too. But in the meantime, thanks for watching Leave Curious.